What's up everybody, this is Joshua Casper and welcome to an Adobe After Effects tutorial. Today I'm gonna show you two quick methods of getting data from audio files to use for animations inside of After Effects. There's gonna be a fairly basic one and then a more involved one, but they're both really easy and you can do them fairly quickly. This tutorial is gonna focus on the technical aspect of things, getting the data, and then using that data to make a basic animation. Obviously, the sky's the limit with this, but the artistic aspect, I'm gonna go ahead and leave to you. So I just have a music track here, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop that on a new comp. Great. And then I'm gonna create a new comp, and I'm gonna make it 1280 by 720, and I'm gonna call this shape. 25 frames is fine and hit OK. And the next thing I do is I'm going to put a shape inside of the comp. And I'm just going to use the star here, click and drag. Great. And if you hold shift, it will keep it like vertical, standing on the two legs down there. If I let go of shift, I can rotate it. But if I hold shift, it's just going to give me that really nice vertical star. The next thing I can do is center it by using my align window. And there we go. Now, what I want to do is use the velocity of my track to make the shape layer bigger and smaller. So if the bass is really kicking inside my track, I want the star to be this size, but when the track is a little quieter, I want the star to shrink. And that's actually quite easy to do. So what I'm gonna do is take the agnostic comp and drop it in here. And as you can see, it's quite shorter than my comp size. So what I can do is hold down shift and drag over for the work area and it will click to the end of the agnostic comp, right click, trim comp to work area, and now I have a much more workable comp size. Now I can right click on the agnostic, and because there is some audio in there, and that could be a vocal, that could be dialogue, or that could be music, in this case it's music, I can come up to keyframe assistant and convert audio to keyframes. And when I do that, it's gonna create a new adjustment layer for me. And if I click on the adjustment layer and come up here to the effects control panel, I can see that it's created a left channel, right channel, and both channel. And what I wanna do is actually delete the left and the right channel because I'm, that's for a little bit more involved things. But for right now, I'm just gonna use both channels and it's got a slider for me. And as I move through the project, you can see that the slider value is changing. And that has to do with the amplitude of the track. So if I click on the adjustment layer and hit U, it's gonna show me just that slider inside of the layer. And if I zoom in, you can see that every frame has a keyframe and that value is changing as I'm going through. Now, like I said, I want this value to drive the size of my shape layer. So if I click the shape layer and hit S, I now have my scale. And the next thing I do is hold Alt and click the stopwatch here and it's not do anything, but it's gonna give me a couple extra options down here. And I'm gonna use this kind of pinwheel looking one, which is called the parenting tool and I'm gonna parent that scale parameter to the slider of the adjustment layer. And then I can click out of here, and as you can see, the star is already smaller, and that's because for that keyframe, the value is lower. I can turn off the viewer for the adjustment layer because there is nothing there, we're just using the data that's inside. And now if I play this audio, the star should get bigger when the sounds are louder and get smaller when their sounds are quieter. So let's just go ahead and preview that. So as you can see, it's working just fine. Now, you can parent anything to be adjusted by that value. So if you wanted to use a ripple effect or you know a glow effect, you can do all of those animations by just parenting them, alt clicking the stopwatch and then parenting them to that slider value. Now sometimes you might want more of a change. So right now it's, I think it's the highest it's going is 50 something, like 55 right here. But maybe that's too small for me. So what I can do is actually click inside the expression and before the semicolon, give it a little bit more so I can go times five for example and now you can see that the star is a lot bigger and if we ran preview it real quick we'll see that that's in fact a lot bigger now so 
So the sky's the limit with that thing. I just wanted to quickly show you how it's done. Now we're gonna move on to the second method, which is going to use the actual frequencies of the, the music or the audio file instead of just the amplitude. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new comp and call this one Spectrum. Great, and again, take my agnostic file and drag it in there. Come over, trim comp to work area, there we go. And new solid. The size of the solid doesn't matter, the color of the solid doesn't matter because we're gonna put an effect on it that's gonna to totally get rid of the solid except for the effect itself. So we can just call it spectrum. Hit okay. And then in your effects of presets, type in spectrum or audio spectrum. And as you can see, I've already got it called up right here and I'm gonna drop it on the file. And now I have these dashed lines. Inside of the effect panel, I can choose the audio layer and I have agnostic here. And it, you can tell it's the audio layer because the microphone is lit up over down here. And I'm gonna hit agnostic. Now if I cycle through, you'll see the very typical fluctuation of an audio spectrum that you've seen perhaps in movies and definitely on YouTube. So obviously there's a lot of adjusting we can do right inside of the audio spectrum panel. First, we can adjust the start point and end point. We can either click in here and drag around or I can use the pointer and it will move. And another cool thing we can do is use a path. So a lot of promo channels, for instance, have a round logo and the audio spectrum wraps around it. So what I can do is click in here and drag and that looks pretty good. And the next thing I can do is come to path and use the mask one. And now you can see, if I turn the mask off, you can see that the audio spectrum is now following the path of the mask, the outside of the mask. And now it's nice and centered and looking really good. The next thing we can do is adjust which frequency is at the beginning and which frequency is at the end. And it starts with 20 hertz to 2000 hertz. So, So you can see that that really heavy bass is really moving that line a lot, but none of the rest of it's really moving. So a good idea might to actually take the end frequency and move it in until you get a little bit more motion going on. And now that I've done that, the lines are actually getting really tall and you can see that the mask is cutting it off. And to, to change that, we just come into mask inverted and now we don't have to worry about it. So that's pretty cool, but we can also change the number of lines, frequency bands inside of there, and it can get a little bit nicer looking. We can also adjust the maximum height if we wanted to. The thickness of the bands themselves. So that's nice, and obviously we can adjust the colors to something a little cooler. And another couple of parameters that I wanna draw your attention to are the display options on the side options. The display options, there are three choices. There's the digital, analog lines, which will make it look a connected line, which will have peaks and valleys, which is cool. And then the analog dots, which is also cool. And on the side options, we can choose to have side A and B, which is where on the path, the animation will go below and above it. But we can also go just above it and we can also go just below it. And perhaps if I have it on the lines, it's a little more apparent. So here it's going inside the circle and here the lines are outside the circle. So usually it's gonna be outside the circle because you'll have your logo placed in the middle and you don't wanna cover up your logo with any animation or anything like that. For right now, I just wanna show you if we duplicate it and now I have another spectrum and instead of the digital display options, I turn it to dots and I bring up the height like that. And then I take the audio offset and move it back just a little bit. Let's move it back just like that. Now it's gonna look like kind of the audio spectrum you'll see on a console, a mixer console or something like that where the top value kind of floats for a second and then floats back down behind the actual movement of the audio. So again, these are just some ideas of things you can do 
but I wanted to show you those two methods of getting the data from the audio inside of After Effects and telling After Effects what to do with that data to make animations move in time with your audio clips. Hope you've learned something. We'll see you next time. Peace.